Much of Hindu mysticism is associated with the ancient belief in Kundalini, the serpent power. The All India Institute of Medical Science is undertaking a special study revolving around the experience and books of Gopi Krishna. Pandit Gopi Krishna's Indian admirers say that he is a master of Hatha Yoga, a great saint, a man who has seen his body and the functioning of his body from a distance, an enlightened man, an adept. My first experience was of an expansion of the mind. I felt as if I was coming out of the body and spreading on all sides. My whole being was filled with the light and gradually I reached a state in which the body became a distant phantom and I myself seemed to be floating in a void full of consciousness, happiness, without any ideas of the world or of the body. At first it was not simply happy. It was something you had to evolve to. You see, the first experience was full of happiness, but afterwards the flow of the pranic energy in my nerves caused certain disturbed conditions of the body, and after that, when I had the same experience, it was fear-ridden. Do you follow me? Yes. If I remember correctly, it was because the pranic energy had only been aroused from one side of your body. Yes. The pranic energy at first went through Pingala, the solar nerve, and naturally it caused a state of heat in the brain, with the result that for many weeks and months I lived in a peculiar state of mind, hovering almost between life and death, between sanity and insanity. What had to happen for that to correct itself? One day when my condition became very precarious, I remembered a talk I had with a relative of mine that when Kundalini is aroused through Pingala or Ida, there is a disturbance which can assume very serious proportions. So then, just to neutralize the arousal of Kundalini through the right nerve, I concentrated on the left side of my body and imagined a current coming up and on the left side of my spinal cord. Then there was a sort of a sound at the base of my spine, and then I felt a silvery radiance going up into my head. Formerly it was of a reddish color, but now it was silvery with a slight tinge of gold. That purified my system, and I began to gain in health and also in mental equilibrium. Though the process was very slow, and I had again to face crises in my life. The process was several years, in fact. Yes, yes, it took several years. In fact, I became stabilized after, say, 15 years. In Kundalini Yoga, the psychic nerves, called Nadi in Sanskrit, and the psychic nerve centers, called Chakra, are developed. The psychic nerve center, situated in the hollow of the spinal column, is the chief or median nerve, and interconnected by it are the psychic nerve centers, wherein are stored, like electricity in dynamos, the vital force called prana, upon which all psychophysical processes ultimately depend. First, the psychic nerve centers are awakened or uncoiled, beginning with the first, the root support of the median nerve, situated in the perineum, wherein the mighty occult power, personified as the goddess Kundalini, lies coiled like a serpent asleep. 
When this root support, called the Muladhara, is awakened, the yogi experiences illumination. The Kundalini, or serpent power, continues its upward course, penetrating and setting into psychic activity the second nerve center in the center of the sex organs, the third, the navel center, the fourth, the heart nerve center, the fifth, the throat nerve center, then the sixth, situated between the eyebrows like a third eye, until like mercury in a magic tube, it reaches the brain psychic nerve center, called the thousand-petaled lotus, which is the supreme or seventh of the centers. Therein a subtle transformation is effected, in which the moon fluid or transmuted sex forces are psychophysically all-powerful. The divine bliss arising from the illumination descends as heavenly ambrosia to feed all parts of the psychic body, even to the very toes. All the psychic nerve centers are uncoiled or set into functioning activity, and the smallest of the psychic nerves, compared to their undeveloped condition, are like median nerves in the ecstatic condition of body, such as mystics like Milarepa or Gopi Krishna commonly enjoyed. I would like to start and talk about how to raise Kundalini. There may be a thousand methods, and there may be so many new techniques, but this power cannot be forced by any effort of man. We have to submit to it, to seek its help, to be blessed by it, and that is what is called grace. There are, however, some conditions which would help to allow that to happen, conditions that you have described in your book. Yes. Could you talk about them? Yes. You see, moral upliftment is a part of man's evolution. Therefore, every effort that is made to uplift oneself morally is an effort made to awaken Kundalini. It is only when there are certain noble characteristics, as for instance, love for fellow human beings, humility, truth, fortitude, absence of envy, absence of hatred, absence of malice, absence of anger in a human being, then is the real ground prepared for the arousal of this power. This you know. What we don't know is the physical technique. You see, even they are not something strange and exotic. In the ancient books on the subject, from the Vedic times, certain methods have been developed which help, which are not totally foolproof, but which only help. And that is concentration, meditation, sitting in a certain right way when the back is kept straight and the backbone is not flexed or bent. Also breathing in a rhythmic manner so as to help concentration. But the main thing that is done is to apply the mind to the image or the ideal or the abstract picture of God or even an ordinary and to keep the mind on it for a long time so that one is saturated by the idea of divine through and through. 